Yes. Hello. Who am I speaking to? Max. Max who? Max Rempel. Max Mekashov Rempel. Ah, I'm not sure I know you, but this is Jules. Oh, welcome. Do you Hi, know Jules. me? Yes, yes, of course. You're, you're very popular. Oh, Your books are very popular. Books, because of the books. Of course. Yes, all right. Um, so uh, the questions are, you know, I just wanted to meet you because I feel connected to you. Mm, I'm um, connected. Uh, In what way? Because of the writing. Uh, spiritually, of course, because of the writings, yes. And because of the lifestyle and because of the way of thinking and vibrations. Well, thank you. I, I believe that the vibration at my time was, I was a little ahead of my time. I was thinking of things that uh, could happen that weren't happening yet. And yet it all seems so logical. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, it, and it, um, it translated very well in the books. Nice. So oh, yes. So uh -huh. with them because they seem to uh, resonate with my um, belief systems that for the future in many ways. And, um, but also I threw in the fantastic as well. So uh -huh. the fantastic is what made it more interesting. I think the science that I used was quite logical. But the, yes. the fantasies that I used were a little out there. But I think that's what everyone was looking for at that time. They were looking for a sense of a greater than, the, greater than normal. So uh -huh. everything had to be super big or super fantastic. So it was that I was able to produce and create some a uh, super in interesting characters. <laughs> Some of the characters also were right. larger than life. <laughs> all right. Uh huh. Yes. All right. So, um, uh, did you did you have any help in writing? Did you talk to any uh, supernatural beings or extraterrestrials? Um, I don't know if I spoke to any extraterrestrials directly. Um, I think that some of them spoke to me in my sleep because I did remember having some very unusual dreams during that time, but no one spoke to me in the, in the physical about these. Oh, I did speak to other writers and such and, and uh, people that would be interested in this kind of thing and get their input about certain features of the books. But uh, as uh -huh. far as speaking to extraterrestrials, uh, not directly. But I think that they did have a, a, some uh, effectiveness in my dream state. Uh huh. I remember that the seeing um, sort of like alien beings in my dream state, but they weren't part of the book. Right, right, uh, right. Maybe some ideas of colors and shadings uh, that for my writing, meaning that uh, I was going to make the creature a different color than I actually uh, decided to finally make it. I was going to make it a brighter color than it was, and they said, "No, no, you need to have it as a a darker color. It's more realistic." So. A darker color it was. All right. Uh huh. And um, your family life, um, it looks like it, um, it uh, pushed you towards writing, right? Mm, in many cases, yes. It was better to be alone and writing and escaping exactly through, through what I was writing than to deal with it. Also, I was, having, I was having just troubles with my own identity at that time. I was 
feeling many things that were not uh, normal, and and I just wanted to get away and be away from it. All right. And uh, your relationships with children were suffering from your writing, right? In the many senses, yes. Because I could not relate to them. Um, not the... Not in a way that I should. No, I couldn't relate to them. And I, I had to find a way to uh, bridge that gap, but it was very difficult for me. But I eventually learned to be able to communicate to them to a certain extent. Uh, did you feel they are not advanced enough? It wasn't that. I think that... <clears throat> I, when I looked at them, I, it reminded me of my innocence, reminded me of uh, a, a childhood that was not so great. And I think that was the problem, is it was a reminder of a not so good past, and they would bring that back up into my thought process. All right. And uh, your connection to water, you, you wrote your books... Uh... Uh, surrounded by water, uh, what what is that relationship? I love the water. The water is relaxing. Uh, to me, water was life. Because even in humans, of course, there's a lot of water. And um, so I think it's, it's um, to me, the water was able to be uh, controlled by the moon and the sun and the... Uh, um, and also it was filled with different and unusual animals and creatures. And I just related heavily with it because also it was very calming to me. It was, it reminded me of myself. I think that I was very different than those around me. And when I think of the water, when I was thinking of the water and all the different animals that were and creatures that were there i i felt more at home with them than i did with my fellow humans at times and so i think i related to that in a very different way than most people would think but um also it was very calming for me um i liked the storms i liked the waves i liked the sound i liked the feel of it and uh, I just, it, to me, it was more playful. The water was more playful than my childhood. So I re it reminded me of, uh, it brought me to a place where I could uh, relax and um, feel calm and uh, relate to, uh, re relate to uh, something positive. Uh huh. Uh, did you meet um, Tesla by any chance? Or did, or were you aware of Tesla? Yeah, I was aware of him. Yes, uh, he was uh, not very popular uh, uh -huh. because of all the negative uh, advertisements about him, uh, uh, and they were pro trying to prove that uh, the direct current that he was. Uh, or ultimate current, I forget which one it was, was dangerous and they just did some horrible things. They were like electrocuting elephants and things of that nature. It was really sad, uh, but um, it was horrifying most people. And so he, he got a bad reputation at, at some point, but he revived it a little bit with his own shows of that were actually quite amazing and interesting. So uh, he went, took to the road to show people that uh, he was not a dangerous fellow. Uh huh. But, uh, and his, his different kinds of feats were to show um, the, the energies flying off of his hands and uh, different things of that nature. And he could, uh, show different experiments and light up rooms with different kinds of uh, electronic equipment, etc. So he was quite 
interesting. Um, but some people did not like him and other people found him fascinating. I myself thought I, I was sort of indifferent at that time because I thought it was all about showmanship and I thought it was all about uh, much less than science in some ways. But yet, as I look back and I see what he has accomplished, um, he was amazing. He was a, quite a genius, for sure. Right. Um, so you, you also predicted a lot of things which happened later. So you saw things from the future. Can you explain well, yeah. how it happened? Um, the thing is, some of it was logical to me. Some of it, it looked very logical to me. The way that society was moving, the way that things had to be presented, and, uh, as, and I could see how things were moving, how uh, thought processes were changing. And so some of it was actually fairly logical to be able to assume. Uh -huh. So you, how spiritual were you? Did, did you have any spiritual practice? Uh, well, I was not really considered a very spiritual person. Um, in fact, uh, some would say that, they would, that I was not spiritual. But I did believe in God, I, and, but I did not really talk about it much. I, I more wrote about it in... Uh, some ways I gave yes. I, I actually uh, symbolized God in many ways in my writing uh, but I never directly talked about him right uh -huh. but did you do any like divination work not really I, I did a little I, I was introduced to it and I understood what it was, but it, it actually was a little bit, uh, at first a little bit frightening to me, the fear of the unknown, but I, I understood what it was, and I did do it, uh, did uh, understand it and look into it a little bit, but I did not become uh, very much involved with it. Um. Uh, your, your incarnations, did you learn about other incarnations of yours? Do we you know any other uh, historical figures which were your incarnations? No, I did remember, but in this particular sense, it's hard to look back. Hold on one moment. I think that I was a, I was a writer in other lifetimes as well, but I also was a, um, I also had many other artistic skills. I think I was an artist at one time as well. Yeah, that, that shows through in your writing. It's very graphical. Yes, it's, I was an artist and also a writer in past lives. And there was a couple lives where I did do some spiritual work. Uh, I think there was one life that I was actually a monk. Uh -huh. And in that life, it was not an extremely... Um, exciting spiritual life, but it was a quiet, uh, a quiet um, understanding. I kept a really very detailed notebook about nature and about um, mostly uh, water animals and uh, and things of that fish and and I was living on the coast of Portugal. Oh, and that was uh, one of my monk lifetimes, I, I think. And it was very quiet, but yet it was a very introspective life. And I think that um, it's one of the lives I remember because it, it, I was very introspective and I did do writing in a journal, but I wasn't a professional writer at that time. Uh -huh, but I uh -huh. the things that I wrote were very interesting and had a lot of great um, understanding and perspective. Uh -huh. um, so I think that's why I remember that life. 
And I, it was a life of solitude. And I think that, I have to tell you, I believe that I was born for a more solitude kind of life. In every one of my lives, I ended up in solitude at some point. Uh -huh. And I ended up um, being more creative in that perspective. I think because I did not feel like I totally fit in with the human race uh -huh. in many ways. I saw where they were going and understood them. I didn't agree with all their thought processes. I didn't agree with how they lived their lives. I didn't agree that um, they, sh they should subject one another to such humiliation and pain. Right. My writing points that out as well. Mm -hmm. um, your relationship with money uh, in your life as a writer, um, uh, it looks like you, you did all the work because of the wonderful circumstances with money. Well, um, yes, it, it, let me, it let me be <clears throat> more of myself uh -huh. than I was without it. I could afford to be in solitude and not worry about having to have another job or another uh -huh. place to go or things to do that I, I, I didn't want to do. I could have those particular things paid for and handled for me. So yes, my relationship was money. I was I was happy to have it so that I did not have to uh, do the things that I did not want to do and I did not like to do. And so uh -huh. I, I was able to um, use it to my advantage in that way. Uh huh. Do you I, see I, the, the angelic work when they organize the way that uh, the money was you were dependent, so you had to produce to keep the money going, but yes. you had that arrangement for a long time. Yes. So I did you see that? For a long time. Uh -huh. um, I have to say that um, in that time where I lived, um, having money was a, a very good thing. People respected that, of course, and people were very happy to be your friend. But you see, I, I could also find more solitude with money than I could without it. If I did not have the money, then I would have to face the world. I would have to work and get a job and do these things and, and be with people. And, and I wasn't one, although I did like certain people, I did not want to be a part of society in that way. Right. Did the angels help to you? Like, can you see the angels? Yes. I think that I, there was some, you see, I did think about angels. That is one thing is true. Um, my spiritual understanding was that God would take care of me, of course. But angels were, they were sort of like water creatures to me in some ways. They had like the little gills and the wings and <laughs> they were like, uh, you see, I did love nature a lot and they, so I did love the angels. They reminded me of nature. They reminded uh -huh. me of the winged creatures, uh -huh. they were, the fish even. They, mm -hmm. they reminded me of fish at times, but um, they did help me along. I did rather, would rather speak to the angels than to even uh, any other higher angelic for, uh, higher forces. I felt that I was able to speak to them easier than God or Jesus or any of those. Um, it, just the way it was, that's all. Did you know that they were angels? Well, I thought, I assumed they were, yes. Uh huh. And um, so, as far as I remember your biography, you, when you um, 
when uh, there you had the relationship with one of the publishers and when that publisher died i think you stopped writing right is it right well yes and i'll tell you why uh -huh. i uh, I had been to several publishers before. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They were manipulative. They were, they wanted to change things. They wanted things to be their way. They had, they had uh, control issues. And I have control issues of my own. So when I was working with this particular publisher, I liked that I had more freedom. I liked that they liked who I was. I liked who they were. It was a good relationship. It was a friendship even. Uh -huh. it was even beyond that, we were like a family together at some points. He uh -huh. just, we were just very, very close. Um, uh -huh. And when that passed, I knew that that could never be again. There could not have been, I could not find another publisher uh, with whom I could have this kind of a relationship. And it was, it was very saddening. I went into a, a very deep depression about that. And uh, because of that depression, I wasn't writing. I did write after that uh, some. I did write some. But none of it was published, or at least I don't believe it was. And it wasn't up to par. It wasn't, it wasn't in the same framework uh -huh. of imagination that I had been writing before. It was much more realistic, a, a little more uh, uh, sour, a little more uh, dark. And so... I tried not to be that way, but it's just the way it came out at that time. And um, my, my feelings about writing changed as well. I did not really feel that it, I was contributing at that point. I did do some writing, as I said, and I didn't feel that it was worth contributing. Um, what I did contribute... I thought was amicable and I thought it was worthwhile and had some very good inspirational things in it and had some good positive direction, um, good against evil sort of thing. Whereas uh -huh. the later writings was more, um, uh, a little more negative. So I don't, right. uh -huh. I did not want to share that. I see. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that happened to my favorite uh, writers, uh, Strugatsky. Yeah, their latest works are also very dark, very pessimistic. Well, once you, well, let me explain something to you about that. Once you've gone through a very positive and enlightening area of your life, and you've been very successful, and you've done some really excellent work and have received some good attention from it and good uh, reviews, if you will. And, and then you lose one of the people in your life that is closest to you. And it changes everything. Uh, and it did for me. And I really didn't feel much ins inspiration after that. Right, uh-huh. Yeah, same happened to Strugatsky as well. Right. I also noticed the similarity to, to Beatles. Um, they also stopped, writing, stopped, stopped producing after their manager died. So there was also a love relationship there. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, the thing is about that. Yes, I've looked at, I've spoken to a couple of them. George Harrison and... Uh, John Lennon, I believe. Uh -huh. And they are very interesting people. What they've told me about George Martin is that uh -huh. he was actually as much a creator in their, in their uh, writing. He did a lot of little ditties 
little solos here and there, that without his direction, they would have been much more normal sounding. And uh -huh. they loved how he worked and integrated himself with a loving and calm and very innocent manner around them. He could get a lot accomplished and keep them all in line and uh, without arguments, without negativity. He was a very positive and uh, incredible influence on them. And when he passed, they saw that they could not move on really without him. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. I, I have to move to the next uh, conversation station with the, with the next speaker, which would be uh, by coincidence we're talking to Jules. Um, I invite you to, uh, to work with me on my writing. I, I connect to you, I relate to you. I feel like there is a lot of uh, vibrational um, similarities. Yeah. Well, yeah, so there's, uh, during this little interview that we've done, I, I, there is so much left out, really. Uh huh. And I don't know, sometimes I'm not willing to share all the deep, dark secrets of my life, but I see that you share some of the same thought processes that I do and some of the same um, difficulties in life that I also have experienced. So, right. yes, that is what makes us similar in some ways. So I, am, I will move on now. And who is it that you want to speak to? The ocean. The ocean. Uh-huh. Does it have a personality of its own? Of course. Well, then I shall call it and right. see if it responds. Okay. Have a good day. Have a good day. Thank you for coming. I hope I was able to shed some light on some of the, um, the thoughts that you were having. Yes, you did. Thank you. It is always important that we do, we writers do our job. <laughs> right. <laughs>